Hello everybody, today we want to get into JavaScript fingerprinting. So fingerprinting is the act of gathering a lot of browser data, such as the installed languages and fonts, and aggregating all that which individually don't mean that much, but can in 99.5% of cases uniquely identify you as a user with your device. And in some use cases, that can be better than cookies. So let's dive into which use cases those are, um, when it's better than cookies, and afterwards, we're going to take a look at how to integrate that into your React or Next.js application. So let's dive right into it. Okay, so here we are. And um, we have open one, the application right here, and then also the um, database, which I'm going to get to in a second. And whenever we click download secret file, let's see what happens. So let's click it. And it says mm, forbidden. Okay, so we're not allowed to download the secret file. However, when we reload the database, we can see we've downloaded it three times already. And this is our unique fingerprint, which I will also get to in a second. Let's say, for instance, um, this user is new and they've never downloaded the secret file. And we only want to allow the secret file to be downloaded three times, you know, just for uh, theoretical reasons, just, uh, just imagined reason, just three times. Um, so we can download it. And it says um, right here on the right hand side, download success. Great. Okay, now we can download that again. No problem at all. We can read all the page and uh, we can click download again. Not a problem at all. However, what happens when we uh, try downloading it another time? So let's click download secret file. Aha, not allowed. 403, uh, forbidden. Interesting. Okay, so we, we can't download it, but that's surely gonna be um, easy to bypass, right? So let me just go into incognito, open the uh, same site, let's go into the console and see if it works uh, here. So let's try downloading that. Oh, so even though the normal cookies are not being used in incognito, as we can see here, there are literally no cookies and we can still not download the file. We keep getting errors in the uh, console. Um, we, can't, we just can't bypass it with um, incognito, but surely we can activate the VPN, which I'm doing here on my left hand side. Um, and then, yes, we want to allow the network activity. And okay, I'm currently in Serbia. Um, so let's try that again. Let's read out the page with my Serbia VPN and download this uh, secret file because that should really bypass everything, right? Download secret file. And uh, let's see what happens. Let me click that again. Oh, well, it still doesn't work. Interesting. So it doesn't matter that we are uh, connected to a VPN, which I've turned off just now, um, or we are in incognito mode. Um, doesn't matter. We can still not download the file anywhere. Um, and the data is being persisted in a database right here. So how are we achieving that without any um, cookies? Well, there are some cookies here, but they are not related to this application whatsoever. The answer is JavaScript fingerprinting, which is a really, really cool concept. So let me walk you through what we're doing here. This is um, a route. This doesn't really matter for this application. And um, let's go into our um, app.tsx. And then here you can see we are initializing an NPM package with a provider. And the package is called at fingerprint.js slash fingerprint.js pro react. Uh, let me show you the website. I'm going to go into Firefox for that. Let me show you the package. Um, it's called fingerprint.js. Um, and I believe up to 20,000 requests um, a month are free. I've never uh, used the paid version, just always the free one. And it's really good. Um, so this is the NPM package. It allows us to um, fingerprint in a bunch of different uh, ways. And fingerprint.js. This is the um, the, the website and essentially with a 99.5% accuracy, um, the fingerprinting will work. So what happens under the hood is a bunch of what your browser sends to the server to get the data it wants um, is being aggregated and then um, a unique fingerprint is made just for you. So essentially your language, your graphic settings, your, uh, your fonts, what, what fonts you have installed in the browser, um, which individually don't make up um, any, any, you know, important information, but they all together can in 99.5% of cases uniquely identify you um, even in a GDPR conform way, uh, which the 
um, uh, website states. And the possibilities that allows you to do are essentially really, really nice, especially when you combine it with something like rate limiting, IP-based rate limiting. So now you know the advantages of fingerprinting and let me quickly walk you through um, how exactly we've implemented that in this example. So as you can see here, this is my provider. I've imported from uh, fingerprint.js. We are using the European region and we just wrap our entire Next.js application in this provider. And then we can use a really convenient custom hook that um, fingerprint.js provides us, which is use visitor data. So we can get the visitor data. And if we take a look at what that contains, visitor data dot confidence request ID visitor found um, visitor ID and the zero trust mode. Um, okay, so the uh, confidence is um, the score that tells you how much the agent is secure about the visitor identifier. Um, interesting, you could do something with that. Um, I've only relied on the visitor ID in this case, um, which is the fingerprint that you can see right here, which does not change if you're incognito, which does not change if you've activated a VPN because you are on the same device. And if you, as I mentioned earlier, combine this with an IP-based rate limiting, that would be really good because even if you do switch the device, then the IP will still be the same. And if you don't switch the device, but go into something like incognito, where cookies wouldn't work, the fingerprinting will still work. So either one would almost always work, which is a really powerful combination. Essentially then, we are just rendering out the visitor ID with the fingerprint. And whenever we want to download the secret file, um, we are triggering a server-side function. Now, what does this function do? Well, essentially, um, this is where TRPC comes in, but you could do this just fine in normal Next.js or even um, Node.js, no problem at all. Um, we are looking at the downloads, right? So we're getting all the downloads, which are these ones right here. So we're fetching this um, instance, and then we are taking a look at the times downloaded. So that would just be this value right here. In this case, that's three. And if that is um, equal or greater than three, then we are gonna throw an error, which is forbidden which um, led to the status code you could see, the 403 um, forbidden that we have right here, and then the TRPC client error not allowed, which doesn't let us to the action because we've downloaded the file um, too often. However, if we've never downloaded the file, so if there's no entry to our unique fingerprint, um, or if we've downloaded less than three times, then we are upserting into the database. Um, so either we are updating the value and incrementing that by one each time, so one, two, three, uh, or we are creating that if we've never um, ever initialized um, uh, downloaded the file with an um, ID and then initializing that as times downloaded with one. And I believe the potential for especially things like fraud abuse are really great um, because um, it persists even through incognito or a VPN use, essentially allowing you to you know, prevent anyone from downloading if you're there using the same device or com uh, combining that with um, rate limiting IP based, which is not that hard to implement, uh, which I can also do a video on if you'd like, um, which would be a very, very um, powerful combination. So the um, example I've used here is probably not something you'd um, actually find in a um, production setting. But for example, um, if you want to limit um, API calls, I believe that would be one of the biggest um, use cases for the um, fingerprinting. And that's uh, pretty much all I want to show you. It's a very easy implementation that we can do in our um, Next.js app. It's very easy to implement. It gives you a lot of benefit. And uh, let me show you around the um, studio, so the back end. So let me uh, get that set up and I'll be back in one second. So here we are in the back end. And as you can see, there are 20,000 free API calls you can do each month. Um, you, you can also pay for them if you need more, but I think 20,000 is um, plenty. Yeah, I've used seven of them and uh, it allows you to do really cool stuff. That was all I want to show you for this video. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Um, and let me know if you build something cool with this uh, concept of fingerprinting. Um, and uh, especially if you've never heard about it before, that would be very interesting. Okay, thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Have a good one and bye-bye.